You're watching SLU TV. Now, Maggie Sevchek, Sheree Brown, John Castelli, Lead Forecaster Ashley Colgin, Forecaster Rebecca Callahan, and Sports Director Stephanie Wilga. This is SLU News 22. Well, the Simon Rex Center renovation is just about completed, and we'll have more on that a little bit later in the newscast. And find out how you can avoid the Highway 40 construction. Plus, we'll have a look at Billiken Sports and weather from the Billiken Forecast Center. But first, our top story. There's been a lot of controversy surrounding the new Civility in the Classroom initiative, and reporter Kareem Johnson has more on that report. Campus Civility Initiative. It's a phrase that the St. Louis University campus has been talking about for months. What is it and why are you hearing that phrase a lot on campus? When Dr. Paige Turner presented the Classroom Civility Initiative at the October 31st SGA meeting, the controversy took off. Turner's aim to establish guidelines for students and faculty for an open and respectful classroom environment. St. Louis University joins several other universities and colleges adding classroom or campus civility initiatives to students and sometimes faculty across the nation. From UC Berkeley in California to American University in the nation's capital, administrators feel that the classroom civility is an issue that needs to be addressed. St. Louis University is no different and the civility in the classroom committee was convened to address shortcomings in the code of conduct. What are those guidelines? According to a report in the University News from November 9th, the guidelines are as follows. Student behavior infractions are in four groups classified from A through D, increasing severity. Type A infractions include coming late, sleeping, text messaging, or not attending class. Type B infractions are usually repeated type A offenses and would not usually involve outside the classroom involvement. Type C infractions create a, quote, guarded environment, usually through the harassment of another student, or ridicule in the classroom. Type D infractions are most serious where threats against another student or faculty occur. These infractions would be referred to the Office of Conduct. The SGA drafted a student section to the document on November 7th and unanimously passed the resolution at that meeting. It now awaits the University Provost approval. Kareem Johnson, SLU News 22. Well, lead forecaster Mary Fester is joining us now. Hi, Mary. Today I really wanted to pull out my hat, gloves, and scarf because it was really cold. Mm -hmm. And this weekend, is it going to be a little better or are we in for a chill? Well, we're in for a chill, at least for Saturday. It's We have a potential for freezing rain, actually, in the morning, so it's going to be a pretty wet and nasty weekend. But Becca Callahan will have more of that in the five-day forecast, but let's talk about what's going on right now here on campus. It is about 43 degrees under partly cloudy skies. And our humidity is at 32%, so it's relatively low. And our winds are calm, and our pressure is 30.32 inches and falling as this low pressure system sitting over the Rockies is going to be heading into our area. And the bigger picture, though, for the weekend is this low pressure system sitting down here in the Baja Peninsula, wrapping a lot of moisture with it, and that'll be pushing northeastward into our area for the weekend. But for tonight, our low temperatures are going to be pretty chilly as this Arctic air moves down from Canada. As you can see, upper 20s across most of Missouri and high 30s in northern Arkansas. But for tonight, for St. Louis, look for a low of about 31 degrees. It's going to be clear, and winds are going to be out of the south to southeast at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. And for our three-day forecast, Friday's going to be pretty nice, 51 degrees for our high, so that's not too bad. And then a little cold front pushes through, and that'll drop our temperatures to about 29 degrees for the low and then Saturday morning is when we have that chance for freezing rain so watch out for that but that'll be pretty early in the morning so I don't think you'll have to worry about that and then 44 degrees for our high and our low temperatures will be holding steady overnight and then Sunday we'll have a chance for rain all day and temperatures will hit a high of 56 around midnight but then that'll be steadily falling throughout the day and we'll see a low of 30 degrees but Becca Callahan will be joining us later in the newscast to give you the extended weather and now we'll go back to John and Cherie at the desk. Well, it really sounds like it's going to start feeling like winter. Yes, it does. Well, coming up after the break, the uh, construction on Simon Rec is just about completed, but the construction on Highway 40, now that's just getting underway. Those reports are coming up right after the break. Stay with us. 
The construction on Highway 40 may pose a problem for many drivers in the coming weeks. Reporter Anastasia Folarunjo has more on that report. When students return for a new semester on the 18th of January, they will be faced with a major change to the city of St. Louis, the shutdown of Highway 40. All lanes of the highway will shut down from Ballast Road to Interstate 170. On the west end of the closure, eastbound I-64 will be diverted to north or southbound I-270. At the east end of the closure, westbound I-64 will have one lane exit only to Hanley Road and two lane exits only to northbound I-170. Southbound I-170 will have one exit lane only to Eager Road and two lane exits only to eastbound I-64. There will be no access on or off I-64 at Brentwood. Students who live past I-270 and who frequent the malls in Richmond and Brentwood will be the most affected by the highway shutdowns. Well, I usually take 40 to, from near West County till here, and so by it being closed, I'm going to have to find other ways of getting here, and probably 44, but I know a lot of other people are also planning on taking 44, so that's going to cause a lot more traffic everywhere. The weekend shuttle, which a number of students use during the weekend to get from the SLU campus to the malls, will not be affected because its route already bypasses the highway. Students are encouraged to find new routes now and time them so they are ready for the inevitable traffic problems that will arise from the shutdown. For commuter students who would like more help finding new routes to SLU, contact the Commuter Student Association at slucsa at gmail.com. Thanks, Anastasia. Well, if you've, if you've walked by Simon Recreation Center lately, you may have noticed the absence of something, barricades. That's right, the main entrance opened this past Monday, so you no longer have to walk all the way around to Laclede to get inside. The reopening of Simon Rec's main entrance marks the beginning of Phase 2 completion in the expansion and renovation project of the center. Construction for Phase 1 began about one year ago in October 2006 and ended with a ribbon cutting in January of this year. The additional 40,000 square feet of space houses a 200-piece state-of-the-art fitness center consisting of three areas for cardio and two for free weights. Some more recent finishing touches include a juice bar and bouldering wall. The whole openness, the, the open feel to it, um, and I think in terms of level of comfortability, um, you know, the space that we've added with fitness, added additional locker rooms, everything is much more spread out. So I think we can accommodate more users and uh, the, the folks that come in are going to feel comfortable, not like they're right working out right up on top of their, their counterpart or their neighbor. Phase 2 renovation involves more than just a new look to the lobby. The center boasts 5,000 square feet of fitness space with new equipment on the upper level as well. The space that used to be the only fitness area now offers a smaller, quieter alternative to the main one on the lower level. The indoor tracks corners are also expanded and new multi-purpose rooms can host a variety of classes. During Christmas break, glass will be added to the external canopy, carpeting to the main entrance, and the gym floor will be sand repaired, varnished, and repainted, ending the $8 million project. The expanded hours for Simon Rec Center are available on their website at simonrec.slu.edu. And after the break, we'll have forecaster Becca Callahan for the extended weather report. Stay with us. We're right back after this break. <laughs> 